AMD delays their GPUs. Elon Musk decides, hey, I'll just, uh, I'll buy Twitter. And Intel decides, hey, maybe we should get into more mining things. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So we're gonna start off today talking about the delay of not the next generation, but the next release of AMD GPUs, which is going to be the 6000 series X50 refresh. It's really, I don't know what to call these things, but the 69. 50 XT, 6750 XT, and 6650 XT, as well as 6850 XT are being delayed from April 20th, which was the anticipated release date until May 10th. And with that, we're getting some confirmation, however, that they are going to be going with the all black midnight edition version of the GPUs, as you can see right here. These are the 6X50 XT GPUs, and they're gonna be a bit different than they were with the regular RX 6000 series, if you can get them from AMD's reference setup. Well, in case you're wondering what's gonna be different about these GPUs, as far as we know, it's only going to be slightly faster memory speeds going from 16 gigabits per second on GDDR6 all the way up to 18 gigabits per second, which is like a 12% increase, but it's just, it's not its not anything to write home about. However, there could be other differences and AMD just hasn't told us anything as of yet. But people might be upset with NVIDIA with the fact that they released a 3090 Ti that costs 33% more and only gives you five to 10% better performance in games. I feel like these are gonna be slightly worse. Hopefully they come in at roughly the same price point. This is probably an unremarkable refresh from AMD, but let me know what you think of this down below in the comments. And I'm gonna let you know what I think about today's video sponsor. I love them. I used them before they were a sponsor and they've continued to sponsor Hot News and UFD Tech and that's Four Sigmatic, my friends. It's the coffee that I drink every single morning and you can click our link in the video description. You can sign up and get 30% off of your first order with them. But the key thing about this coffee is that it actually has culinary mushrooms put in it. And anecdotally, it makes me think better. Brett does the brain good when he has Four Sigmatic. And not only do they have coffee, they have other teas and herbal drinks that you can have as well. And in fact, they're launching their new whole bean coffee. So you want the coffee mixed with the lion's mane mushroom, you can now get that in whole bean variety. I'm a pleb who does ground coffee. I don't, I don't have a coffee grinder. That's just how I am, but you can potentially pick that up. But that's my favorite one right there. There. But they also have other options such as instant coffee or potentially even coffee pods in case you have one of those weird machines that are terrible for the environment. Also, I like to relax in the evenings and I do so with the mushroom cacao with reishi mix, which I know I'm saying mushrooms a lot, but you can't taste them. That That's like against what ha is happening here. It tastes like coffee. This tastes like a cocoa drink. Trust me, I've had every single person in the office try the mushroom coffee and none of them can taste the mushrooms because that's not the point. The point is better clarity, better relaxation with the coffee that you're drinking, but not providing any weird sort of aftertaste. So check them out at the link in the video description. Try it once. If you don't like it, don't continue to use it. But I tried it once and I've been hooked on it ever since. So check out Four Sigmatic at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. And while AMD is not going to be ready to release the X50 refresh of their GPUs, they're ready to release the RX 6400. It's popping up at retailers all across across the world in China, in Argentina. We're seeing these GPUs pop up. Prices are a little weird in Argentina. It's about $450, which is not normal. And then in other places, it's about $235, which again is rather expensive. Who knows what this thing's gonna actually really cost. It's probably not gonna come out to retail here in the United States. But uh, in case you really want a super duper low end GPU, 6400 might be the way to go. But AMD is not looking to go low end. In fact, this is a very AMD heavy version of hot news, they are looking to spend a lot of money with them acquiring Pensando for $1.9 billion. Pensando works in data center solutions, namely in things like network interfaces and DPUs. And AMD saying that they want to build a leading edge data center with the best performance, security, flexibility, and lowest total cost of ownership requires a wide range of compute engines. The Pensando team brings world-class expertise and a proven track record of innovation at the chip, software, and platform level, which expands our ability to offer leadership solutions for our cloud, enterprise, and edge customers. This is obviously on top of the acquisition AMD already had with Zillinx, which I believe was for $40 billion, but this is likely a counter move to the fact that NVIDIA has acquired Mellanox, which is a company that also makes cloud computing stuff and is part of their DPU solutions. So AMD going for Pensando here to help bring out their full product stacked against NVIDIA. And let's product stack up the crypto stonks. Bitcoin and crypto, just middling day. Bitcoin's down 
0.59% to be at 46,156. Ethereum's up 0.2% to be at $3,500. And Dogecoin's down 0.5% to be at 14 and a half cents. Not a whole lot to report there, but there's a whole lot to report on UFD deals. Reese brings you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And what we have is some several good deals. All right, with WD Black, one terabyte SN 750 SE is going for $125 right now. That's 31% off. You get Battlefield 2042 for free with it, which I think they should probably drop the price even lower if they're going to include 2042. But it's 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 a decent price right now. Gigabyte has their G5 GD laptop on sale for 25% off, only $750 for an i5 RTX 3050, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, solid gaming laptop for only 750 bucks. And Cooler Master has three of their 120 V2 ARGB sickle flow fans going for $26.99, which is a 55% discount, my friends. That means that each fan's roughly $9, which for addressable RGB fans from a good company, that's that's a solid deal. So check UFD deals out at the link in the video description. And Elon Musk checked out Twitter and was like, hey, I don't like what you're doing, so I'm gonna buy it, at least as much as I possibly can. Elon Musk being announced as having a 9.2% stake in Twitter with SEC filings being spotted. The 9.2% share is costing him $2.9 billion, and this is coming after Elon Musk was criticizing Twitter on Twitter by saying that they don't really adhere to free speech principles. However, according to the SEC filing, he bought the stock before he actually tweeted these things, and so he was complaining about the thing that he is now the largest shareholder of after he already made made the acquisition stake of it. Nobody has more stake in Twitter than Elon Musk does now. And with that sort of leverage, he might change the website to better suit what he wants and his needs and what he thinks Twitter should be. Obviously, this does not make him an executive, but it could potentially warm his way onto the board of Twitter and it might change it as we know it. What do you think of Elon Musk being part of Twitter? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. And Valve wants you to hear from them about your Steam Deck. They're sending out emails, all right? Q2 emails already going out. Valve saying that they could potentially even have emails going out every week or even twice a week because they are just ramping up production on these units. It was previously reported that Valve said that they wanted to be in the hundreds of thousands of units in production by this month. And it looks like, at least according to their statements, they're starting to ramp up on that. And we are ramping up on our Steam Deck content over on UFD Tech. We're gonna be putting like roughly 20 terabytes of storage on my Steam Deck. So get subscribed to UFD Tech in case you wanna see that. But are you waiting for a Steam Deck? I wanna hear from you and are you waiting for a gigantic M.2 heatsink thermal right thinks you are. Look at this bad boy. That's a tall chunkers. It is so huge. They haven't revealed price or what when it's coming out, but uh, they, I just wanted you to see it. It's like three quarters of the size of a graphics card. That is a massive, massive M.2 heatsink. You're going to need it for when PCI Express 5.0 SSDs come out and you're going to need some cryptocurrency mining. And in fact, Intel's got a great deal for you. All right. They're going to be bringing out Bitcoin miners on their block scale technology, which they want to produce in order to sell more crypto mining stuff. However, Intel saying that this shouldn't necessarily affect anything in the GPU or CPU department because Intel makes their CPUs at their own fabs. Their GPUs are being made at TSMC. The block scale is also going to be made at TSMC, but on a different nanometer production. But one of the things that they fail to mention is the fact that this is probably taking fab space away from other companies, so you can't have as many things being produced. But don't you worry, okay? Intel, it's their block scale. It's going to be super efficient, up to 580 giga hash at 26 joules per Terra hash. It's one of the best crypto miners out there, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna compromise GPU stuff. It, it can't. Maybe the GPU company shouldn't be so poor that they can't afford TSMC space. That's that's maybe on them. And what's on you is to go out and buy a new AMD CPU, okay? We're gonna round back onto AMD right now with them launching CPUs. We I thought these were coming out April 20th. Surprise! The 5700X, 5600, and 5500 getting reviewed and available for purchase right now. There's several outlets that have them. Not a ton. It kind of seems like AMD was trying to slip this one under the radar. There are a few reviews out there. Mostly, it does seem like the 5700X and 5600 and 5500 are like all right at price to performance, especially when you compare them to AMD's previous chips and when you compare them to Intel's 11th gen. However, when you compare them to Intel's 12th gen, it really kind of falls apart in the price to performance category with Intel's 12th gen kind of beating them out in single and multi-core scores, Alder Lake just being a phenomenal series of chips. But they are available for purchase right now. I couldn't find anything on Amazon, but if you head on over to Newegg, you get the 5700X for $299 right now, the 5600 for $199, and the 5500 for $159. Let me know if you're interested in any of these CPUs down below in the comments. I'm gonna let you know that I'm interested in leaving. I'm done. This episode of Hot News is gone. I'll see you tomorrow for more tech news, my friends.